Hey guys, hope you're all well and welcome to this painting showcase. Today we've got two awesome Astra Militarum Imperial Guard characters for you to check out. Uh, I really hope you're going to like these. A massive thank you to Games Workshop for sending us these miniatures in advance to paint up for this uh, preview. Um, now let's jump in and have a look at these two awesome characters. See you guys back in a sec. Hi guys, welcome to this preview video where we're going to look at a couple of fantastic Imperial Guard models. Both serious, both full of character, but both quite significantly different despite fulfilling a, a fairly similar role in the Astra Militarum army, let's be honest. One's a little bit more scary because he's in black. Oh yeah. Well, let's let's talk about that one first then. And this guy is imposing. He's got his chest puffed out, huge metal chest plate of armour. I'm, I'm kind of wondering, you know, I, I don't know, if it was me and I was wearing an overcoat, which I used to do uh, for work, I would probably wear it over things. I probably wouldn't be putting my armor over the top. What if you get hot and sweaty while you're on the battlefield, working out, chopping some boys with your chainsword? It's a, it's a lot of stuff you're to take off. You're not going to want to take your armor off to take your jacket no, off, are you? you no, know, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff to take off when you get a sweat on. So, so yeah, maybe, maybe it's maybe it's breathable in some way. You know? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so two awesome, awesome models. Uh, the, 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 the Commissar, uh, again, re a very iconic and imposing model, obviously, for, for the Astra Militarum range. A lot of the Commissar models through the ages uh, have been quite static. Yeah. Um, uh, there was one that's got like a power sword drawn that was charging with a plasma, really oh, sort of like across his chest. He's got the sword and stuff like that in the past. And obviously, um, Commissar Gaunt in both his versions is yes. pretty decent. Yeah, he's got a bit more of a dynamic pose. Again, I understand why they've gone down the the, the, the sort of stoic, uh, sort of like resolute kind of stance. I think it's, it looks makes the model yes definitely look more imposing. Um, yeah. uh, however, I probably would have personally preferred a, a more more sort of uh, dynamic charging or, or doing something uh, like a more of an executing pose or something like that would have been quite quite cool yeah. in my mind but i love the model I, I just think that you know something a bit more dynamic would have would have been awesome um, but i wonder i wonder how much you could do with obviously the the core of the body's very um uh, contained and upright and doesn't yeah, necessarily yeah. have as much conversion potential yeah but yeah. with like with that commissar's peaked hat that is as much a symbol of his authority and rank that yeah. we would recognize as yeah, the jacket yeah. itself yeah so, definitely um, like with the amount of new imperial guard stuff you could do um kit swaps pretty easily some kit bashing and i reckon you could swap some heads around and get yourself both a dynamic commissar and maybe take um from the upgrade sprue for the cadians yeah. um just you know a different head for this another sort of serious face would work quite well and you can kind of combining the two to make your own yeah, definitely. I mean, as I said, like, I think one of the beauties of it, they're all going to plastic now, is that you can start doing all these cool things like weapon swaps, uh, head swaps. Um, I mean, I, I, on this one, who's painted it, so Adam obviously worked on it. Um, he, he done it in like a day and a half, which is, is awesome for, for, for a model of this kind of like, uh, of quality and, and obviously for speed. Uh, but, that he had lots of ideas of things to do in it and i think when we talk about the latter model out of the two i think that that's where we kind of went a bit more a bit more fun with it and doing done some things that are a bit different um or haven't been seen in a long time uh and then and then with this we wanted to just keep it as close kind of like to so the box art as possible in the sense of the, the overall color palette and choices yeah. um i think because a, a commissar is you know it, when you think commissar in 40k it comes with a certain kind of set parameters of how they should be you know they wouldn't exactly you wouldn't get like an essex version in leopard print would you so you know it's a it's, it's a it's a it's a little bit different to, to to the normal but um but he's obviously in the jet black overcoat and and everything the peak cap as you said is an amazing sort of like almost you you, you know you can imagine him you know he may not have the over coat on he may not have his armor on but like if he got this if he got woken up by an early attack or something i'll tell you what that hat would be on quicker than you can I say mean, execution. I, I have a feeling there's actually a, a a couple of rare times in the gaunt's ghost series where commissar Ibram gaunt is actually left uh just in his hat at one point i, I um, believe you're correct correct <laughs> <laughs> and his underclothes he's got out of bed and he's there's an attack incoming and he's got his hat on and it's like well there's nothing else but the hat is there with a symbol of authority yeah hat chainsaw bolt pistol and uh something to cover cover you know obviously the the essentials i think is 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 all that he would need if there was an early yeah. attack but but what, what i do love in his equipment sorry there's just, just to cut in on this though is um that looking at actually that how the chainsaw works the fact that it's got the power linkage from the chainsaw to the that. wrist looks awesome yeah well, that's yeah. that's fantastic because we, we've never really had that on chain swords on any models no before. You, you're quite right they're all it, self-contained with an on off button and speeds and stuff yeah so having little things like that uh is, is a really really cool thing to 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 actually sort of like 
pick out as a detail as you can see i've done that lovely kind of subtle bluish glow on the energy on the energy pack or the power pack that's yeah. on the sort of like the the van braced kind of armor um even the, the on off button like the green on off button that's on the on the sort of just above the pommel is uh sorry the 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 hilt is um is is there as well uh so yeah little it's, just, stuff, it's stuff really kind like the way the commissar's got his uh hazard stripes going so that the enemy knows which part of him to avoid exactly yeah that's that's uh exactly the point of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, um, that being said as well we do have a couple of tutorials on our patreon as well for hazard yeah. stripes if anyone's looking for any tips on, on getting some hazard stripes done pretty quickly and cleanly yeah, yeah. Um, yes. some weathering tips for them as well to make them look nice and worn and beaten up and rugged rather than you know the style of cleanliness exactly yeah there's there's nothing like uh you know adding hazard stripes as things to to, to denote their their severity or the amount of damage as an iron warriors inflicts. player yeah i feel like it calls to me deeply <laughs> yeah definitely um, iron warriors enthusiast yeah they're, they're they're the absolutely amazing thing to add on and, and the good thing about like, hazard stripes just to talk about them uh it, it just really briefly is that it's a great uh from a technical perspective of painting it's a really good way to to practice brush control uh just to improve obviously your your pressure management with the brush and the ability to draw straight lines which is is in, in itself uh, a thing you should practice and should get better yeah. at as a painter which i think then leads us nicely into our second model yeah which is uh this one i'm a big fan this of. is a, this <laughs> is so retro and i yeah. love it <laughs> yeah uh so when when um when me and i had a chat about it in in office and studio like i was like um i think we should go quite retro with it purely because um it's a brand new hq model or i think it's an hq model for for, for guard or astra militarum and um i think it'd be again nice to do something a little bit different with it as in look back at the past and bring a previous an older color scheme that's maybe not Mordians, isn't it? yeah Mordian iron guard yeah yeah the 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 og dressage chaps yeah they, they are uh it's so vibrant blue you need ray bands to look at him in natural daylight it's uh yeah, it, yeah it's uh you know it's super, well, super vibrant i mean i actually i actually really like what you just said and in terms of how vibrant it is yeah so i feel that's been a lot of times where particularly when ranges are refreshed there's always that disappointment particularly with imperial guard of oh yeah, yeah. maybe this didn't get updated but that did yeah and there's there's a lot of well how do we make our miniatures work with the new models uh if maybe the aesthetics changed over time yeah and i think this really shows how much a paint scheme can change the tone and effect of a miniature yeah without without doing too much else i know there's some, we've got some green stuffing in the upper on the shoulder yeah yeah we but talk like about that. you know principally the color is what's so defining about the 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 feeling you get when looking at this miniature for for this paint scheme yeah i, th I think that the, the, one of the things that we spoke about was that um like a lot of people perhaps feel that they can't they can't paint certain regiments because maybe the kits are made in a certain regiment or whatever but yeah. um there was literally a few little things that were done on this just to make it look like a Mordian on guard. Now you, you already said it, you know, but add green stuff, the epaulettes onto the shoulders, just cause that's stuck like probably but other than the vibrant, super vibrant colors and the, and the, and the complementary triadic relationship of the blue, uh, blue, yellow, and red. Um, the epaulets kind of make the piece uh because that like that is the unique thing that you you look back at the og Mordi uh, mordians and that's the thing this that, is a that, this is a reference to the sergeant isn't it with the power sword and the louse pistol out yeah it is yeah to, to an, it's a very very similar you're you've absolutely nailed it with that with that reference because that is the model that we looked at and we're like that's that's an old classic model and and the castle and kind of kind of looks in that pose instant like instantaneously which for the composition of it kind of nods to it straight away without us really having to do anything so it which is which is quite a nice thing um but yeah the epaulets uh just just adding them on they're very easy to add on and it very quick to do uh and it just solidifies that it's a mordian straight away yeah. visually if you if you did like obviously the color scheme gives it away instantaneously because it's so retro and so vibrant uh touching back to yeah. second ed the base of this is a castellan model isn't it it's the castellan rather than the commissar yes it's the castellan the the, the, the new is the, the new castellan model which is a yeah. really cool kit comes with lots of options which is awesome um i uh, for me i think that it, it just it just when we saw it it screamed needing to do something to it to touch to the to the previous ranges or to older I mean, ranges for myself you've evoked my childhood so when i first started <laughs> warhammer um, it was my teacher, Mr. Boland Straw, an English teacher at school, and he had a Mordian Iron Guard, a Mordian Iron Guard army. Mm -hmm. So I really remember that vividly about starting Warhammer 40k all those years ago and and seeing something like this in the old sculpts. Yeah, it's it's absolutely like absolutely awesome. Uh, I, for me, like I 
I love there's quite a few little details on the model, like irrespective of what Adam's done to start off with. And we can talk about the painting a bit more in depth in a second. But for me, there's a couple of things that I absolutely love about this model, whether it's painted as a Mordian or or uh, any other regiment. There's just a couple of things that I really, really love about the model. And they're little things which tell a story, give character and for as a painter, give you various options and things that you can do. And I'd done something on this with the painting, which which I think uh, is a really good use of just applying the law to the miniature so yeah. you'll probably see he's got like a white glove on yeah um, and then a silver met metallic hand yeah and he's got the bionic hand which i think is great like um the the white glove is a really cool thing uh, uh and i'd just done this off his own cuff because he was like well he wouldn't go into battle with no gloves on you know like no, he was like he's a, he's a wardian <laughs> you know so so like so uncouth. Him, yeah so uncouth. yeah it's like you can imagine him like taking it off and going uh, you know he's outraged and like slapping someone Jewel. with it you know yeah or something like that you know um which i think is an awesome awesome little thing um and you'll notice as well uh, we didn't touch upon it on the commissar but he put both of the miniatures in white dress shirts so if you look at the yes, color of them, yeah they're in like formal dress shirts as well which i think is just it's just great right, uh, it should be properly starched ex exactly yeah yeah um but but no there's there's loads of little options on here like what with the come on the kit and um i like that well i almost like the relaxed shooting uh, plasma arm as well so i like the fact yeah. that it's not outstretched firmly it's, it's he looks like he's completely it, that that not having this outstretched straightened arm kind of gives like a uh, a bit of relaxation in the pose which shows that like he's done this a thousand times and yeah. it, it doesn't really matter like you know he doesn't need to who needs to aim yeah he's, <laughs> well, he's got a plasma pistol so yeah yeah but um but uh... I mean, I'm, I'm actually i'm more disappointed he's, he's he's actually that's how relaxed he is he's not holding arms length for the plasma pistol to explode on him he's yeah. just like ah it'll get me someday he, he's uh, how do you think he lost the other hand like you know, yeah, so, yeah, of course, uh, yeah. so yeah so um <laughs> but, but but from a painting perspective yeah it's like sticking a white glove on him just nods to that you know well he's a, he's an officer you know which and yeah. uh he's got that kind of like uh status that he's like oh i wouldn't i wouldn't grip a weapon with my bare flesh or something like that <laughs> you, know, like, you know which i think is which is great um and the the the, the bionic hand was an interesting one because the the difficulty was is obviously the the yellow represents uh obviously the yellow hue but at the same time on older models it was used to represent obviously gold, gold so yeah. so uh we, we obviously can't do nmm on it because you've got metallic paints on there as well and sometimes it kind of it doesn't visually sell what the material is if you've got one that's painted nmm and then one that's painted in metallic so we either had yeah. to go all in metallics or go all in nmm and i just think for them for, for this metallics served served a better purpose which is what i chose and i, I completely agree with his decision well, on it because you've it's... already got those sort of like pseudo gold yeah yeah. Uh, yeah you wouldn't want it then on the on the handle as well yeah right? exactly exactly uh, but then you then it's like all oh, the power cable is also yellow as well and it's like well that that's not gold you see so it, there's various things that like you just just not that you there, there does reach a point though where you don't want to just overload a mini with every color known to man yeah or, or technique for that matter you know as yeah. well i think that's the other thing um as for colors just to touch upon it like um the, 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 we use super super vibrant for paint on this i mean i think the reds were all mephiston and evil suns and things like that but i think the blue we've got a couple of pots of old <laughs> og og and enchanted blue kicking around yeah i was gonna yeah, say so calador it, sky for people who are wanting to do a sort yeah, of similar modern uh, yeah yeah, yeah. GW paints calador sky works absolute charm um you know uh and then i think you shaded it with some with cantor and then cantor with for the deep shade like cantor with a bit of black in it if memory serves correct yeah. um what, what do you what do you like about it the most ed so what's the thing you like or what um, things so, you like well, so the thing that actually grabs my eye first is the glowing effect adam's got on the plasma i really liked yeah um again harping on about our patreon we do have a plasma tutorial that's the same um same style of colors and, and bright glow on a patreon yeah but it, it did catch my eye first in terms of that vivid brightness yeah um i really like the mustache on the face yeah. uh, little thing again i just really like that it adds so much character again to it. it's a bit of a stiff a stiff upper lip style <laughs> uh leader facial mustache if we were going to go with a stereotype it sort of to me throws back to you know uh more imperialistic armies from the real world um, i don't know if you can notice it but he even curled the end yeah yeah oh, i can upwards. see don't worry he's yeah, yeah. been, he's been oily, oiling those up before free battle yeah so you've got, to, you've got to got to take care of it properly um although weirdly actually you know when we've looked at it for a bit so one of the things i, I don't like as much um it's actually the size of the sword you know when you can see it next to the when when the model's holding it it's it's pretty big and i know obviously he's got a cybernetic hand maybe he's got a cybernetic arm and it is it is you know it's a fantasy world but that is that is a huge weight for someone to be swinging around like it is wider than his head 
Um, and that scabbard is not big enough for it. Yeah, you pointed out to me already. But uh... it, I, I, the thing is, you, you don't know that you couldn't have another sword as well. This is the thing. Yeah. Like again, it's it. Look, it yeah, arguably that sword that he's it's only a little is, thing. I mean, yeah. it's not. It's yeah, by it, no means a bad. No, no, no. Sword. It's just, it just struck me suddenly as as something different. No, totally. I mean, the thing is, I think you look at you look at it from a design perspective as well, just to touch upon it. Like the scabbard, for example, I think if it was the length of the physical blade, it would touch the base or be off the base to the left, yeah. I think, or to, if you're looking at it from the back. Um, and that could just simply be a design thing. Um, but then it could just easily, as we said, it could just be the fact that he's got another sword and he's not he's not carrying that or he's not decided to take that from his armory to battle that day or i don't yeah. know um th- i would like to think that perhaps because it's plugged into the generator and it's sort of like fully locked in and, and it, that he's chosen to take that sword as opposed to the one that maybe goes in the scabbard or something but yeah yeah i think visually like if you if you didn't think of all that like story and narrative then the 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 the, the, the massive chopper that he's wielding would not fit uh-huh. in that in it would not fit in that um in that uh in that scabbard um i, I really like the, the the other thing i'll touch upon is that the, you mentioned it but that glow effect it's also been used in in, in like a triarch of places so it's been used obviously on the plasma it's been used on the generator and it's also been used on the power node on the on the on the sword as well so you've got that really yeah. nice from the front you only see the the node and the uh the, the plasma but then if you rotate the model you you then like see those little touch points of yeah of, of of narrative to it as well um so yeah but it's uh I, I, again he's not got a tactical rock he's got a tactical brick as well like it's a it's a it's a firmly lodged bit of masonry yeah the, the, an acute angle that allows him to uh to stand there and uh dispatch someone with honor justice yeah. <laughs> um so yeah that's the, that's the two models uh again the re- i'd really enjoyed working on them i hope you guys have, have liked them so much let us know in the in the comments which you prefer do you prefer the the, the commissar or do you prefer the castell and if so what if you prefer the castle and which uh which regiment would you paint yours if you had a two-day challenge to paint uh, to paint one what would you choose and what would you do to make it a bit uh, a bit unique for yourself uh, it'd be really interesting to see what you guys choose and we'll, we'll obviously reply to the comments that you guys put on the video so yeah so i hope you liked it um and uh, we'll see you uh, very soon on the next one And do you know what I was actually saying? Like while I was sitting here, my first one of my first Mordians is sitting here in front of me, and I totally didn't put it on camera. But never mind. My exact model you're talking about. Oh yeah, 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 love it. But I changed the last pistol for a bolter because I was like, yeah. a last pistol is not an officer's weapon. Yeah. <laughs> God, that 